it's fitting that my nephew introduces me because he loves stories. And I'd like to tell you one today, if you indulge me a little bit. Um, in 1986, a young girl was injured by a reckless driver at the corner of John Barrow and McKinley Road in my hometown of Little Rock, Arkansas. At that point, a young teacher was coming out of his classroom trying to get home to his family when he noticed the chaos from across the street. He made his way over to the accident and what he saw was shake, shook him, but he wasn't surprised because that intersection in particular had been very dangerous for people in our community for a very long time because of a lack of safety measures. That man was my dad. Um, Fred Jones, at the time, was the sponsor of Henderson Junior High School's Law Club. And he decided to take a moment within that tragedy to teach his students how to community organize. So the law club had a clear plan, right? The, the problem was clear. Students couldn't go to and from school without danger because of a lack of safety measures. They also had a strategy to be as loud as they possibly could about the issue to local officials and local media. Over the course of that school year, their story was on the news four times. And at the end of the year, their campaign ended at the, at the Little Rock's Board of Directors, and um, they won. A large traffic island was placed in front of the school, along with caution lights and surveillance during arrival and dismissal times. So what did we learn from that? Every educator has a stoplight. Maybe it's something that is impacting your students that keeps you from getting to the core of what you need to make them successful. So, maybe it's the school to prison pipeline. According to the 2017 State of America's Children Report by the Children's Defense Fund, 2,805 juveniles are arrested every day. That's one child every 31 seconds with black children being two and a half more times likely to be arrested than white children. Or maybe it's exclusionary discipline practices in your school. In America's public schools, black children are five times more likely to be suspended than children of color. Maybe it's hunger. One in five of our children live in food insecure households with children of color being two times more likely to live in food insecure households than, student, than, than white students. If you're like me, then those statistics fill you with a little bit of hopelessness, right? It doesn't look good on paper. But I wouldn't be Fred Jones' daughter if I didn't come by to give you a little bit of hope. There are people in this world that are organizing to make sure that these issues are covered. For example, right now in San Antonio, the group SA Rise is in conversation with San Antonio ISD to create new policies that keep police officers from life-threatening, life-altering interactions with our children. In Baltimore, the group Baltimore for Educational Equity is or has encourage the city to repurpose $10 million in city money towards their public schools. And in my city, Houston, the, gr the group One Houston has encouraged the school district, Houston ISD, to create discipline practices that cut almost $1 million to exclusionary discipline practices and to eliminate a contract with an organization that created alternative, or alternative education situations for our students that weren't safe. So how did they do that? By focusing on what Adrienne Marie Brown discusses as critical mass, or critical connections versus critical mass, they created small working groups that went out into communities and asked the community what they needed versus deciding on their behalf. There's no way around going into the homes of the people we want to impact most and asking them what they need. 
and then providing resources. Those small working groups also talk to people on the other side of the issue. I was a debate coach. So I understand the importance of knowing that both sides have their own point of view and how to interact with that issue after you've known, after you've done a thorough analysis of it. It's actually one of the most important things. In organizing, we have a saying, no permanent friends, no permanent enemies. It's important to know that you might need some input from the other side of an issue in order to change it. Next, they took that vital information and created actions that impacted them in their communities. That could be policy papers, it could be large protests, anything that will get the attention of people that have power that, to change issues for the, those that need it most. But all of those steps required step number four. That was to agitate those in power until they acquiesced. I'm gonna say that again. Right? Agitate those in power until they acquiesce. This is slow work. Agitation requires time. Research requires effort. It is not something that happens overnight. It is work that is only meant for those who believe that our kids deserve the absolute best. They deserve environments that keep them safe. They deserve to live in neighborhoods where they can walk home at night without being threatened by police. They deserve schools where they can come and be their whole selves without being threatened, threatened by suspension. This is our work. And there is no greater work that we have than this if we are going to make the country and our classrooms safe for the, these students. Those are my babies. And I loved them very much. And it was one of the main reasons why I decided to do the work that I do now. My father had a saying. It was called, do what you undo. Okay. What he meant when he was yelling at us from the living room into the kitchen when we left something out on the counter or left a light on in the room or anything that was not undone was that we were, had a responsibility to return the things that we used to its original condition. We go into our communities every day and think about how much we take. Energy from our kids, food and gifts from our families, their time, their effort, they give us their best. When we go back into those communities, we deserve or we are challenged to create the communities that they deserve by doing what has been undone in our communities. We can return the power to the people that live within them, the people that should have it in the first place. It's our work. It's what I'm committed to doing. And I believe in our collective ability to change the world from our classrooms. We have a lot of work to be done, but I'm very glad that we live in a world where two things can be true. An obstacle can seem to be insurmountable, and you can also have all the hope and dedication and fortitude to change it at the same time. So with that, I'll see you on the ground. Let's go in. Thank you.